I presented this talk at the Kentucky Orthopedic Society geared toward the University of Louisville and University of Kentucky residents and also the faculty that attended the meeting October 2017 at the Galt House. The talk is entitled Sports Medicine Through the Arthroscope and Camera, 30 Years of Practice. This is my experience over the last three decades. I am Mary Lloyd Ireland, professor at the University of Kentucky, orthopedic surgeon. View through the lens, reflections. I started taking pictures many, many years ago, as you can see in the lower left photograph with my brownie camera at the Capitol, Washington, DC. You can see the dates based on the cars and also how cute I looked as a eight-year-old. That was a big highlight in my early life, being in DC, touring, and maybe that's when I got a camera bug. Later on, doing a lot of sideline coverage I continued my passion to take pictures. I had a better spot than the photographers in the box on football sidelines, so I kept on looking through the lens, so to speak. And I've enjoyed taking pictures of animals, birds, and athletes throughout the years. It's a great way to find passion. If you like taking pictures, go for it. Our University of Kentucky orthopedic residents are now covering football sidelines and doing sports medicine hands-on. I think this is a very good way to build your practice. It gives you confidence in your diagnostic skills without hiding behind MRI scans in your offices. You have to be able to communicate, determine quickly whether to let the athlete who is injured go back in the game. So I would encourage our young orthopedists to do this during their residency. It's the best way to develop your practice. Once you get into practice, you serve the community. It's free advertising, and it really is fun. You can reach many generation, the players, the coaches, their parents, grandparents. These are our residents, Wilson, McQuarrie, Unger, and Zacharias, with the athletic trainer at Henry Clay on the right. View from the sideline. I enjoy working and taking care of injured athletes, but if you're not working and you're not busy and you want to do something like I like to do on the sidelines, I enjoy taking pictures. So if you're not working, why not take pictures? We really do have the best view. What about the beginnings of arthroscopy? If you think about it, the arthroscope, much like the camera, has made significant advances. Arthrotomies were done, and we looked in joints and fixed things that way. Unfortunately, stiffness was a problem. So why not make smaller incisions? If you look at the history of orthopedics and arthroscopy, it's a very interesting story. 1918, Professor Takagi was the first to use the cystoscope in a cadaver knee. So this was the beginnings of arthroscopy in the East. Then a more familiar name to us, Dr. Watanobe, developed arth the arthroscope in 1951, and he named them or numbered them with the advances. And in 1958 was the first truly successful arthroscope developed by Dr. Watanobe. What about in the West? In 1921, Jacobius did a laparoscope and put it into the knee. At that point, CO2 was used for distension, so we did gaseous distension and not water distension. This gas distension was popularized by Dr. Bircher. Dr. Michael Burnham at HSS introduced the four millimeter diameter arthroscope into every joint in human cadavers. But there were some pretty interesting cadaver dissections and discoveries of what we could see through the scope as opposed to looking at it directly by arthrotomy. With World War II from 1939 to 45, the advances stopped in arthroscopy. The 
This is a discussion with Dr. Robert Jackson, who is in the middle with the East, discussing cases with Dr. Watanabe and Dr. Ikuchi in Tokyo. Another thing that dates this photograph is that everybody's smoking in 1964. great pioneers with vision that allows us to be able to do the arthroscopic techniques that are now standard in our orthopedic armamentarium. So look how far we've come from the looking through the scope directly with our eyes many, many years ago. In 1982, this SEBA Clinical Symposium on Diagnostic and Surgical Arthroscopy was written by Lanny Johnson, who too was a pioneer in advancements of motorized equipment and motorized burrs and arthroscopic treatment of the shoulder and the knee. And then on the right, I'm scoping a knee. We have made progress with the video cameras, the clarity, what we can see, what we can do arthroscopically. Got to keep up with all these advances and also know the history of how the arthroscope was developed and keep on asking questions and looking back at history. So this was 1985, a scope, what the scope looked like in the shaver. You can see how things have gotten smaller and more efficient from 2005 where we have a smaller scope, better quality picture. This is my website. If you'd like to go to the website, it has presentations and publications, web links, other readings, and some of my passion of photography is on there too, so enjoy. Website is myname.com. Thank you very much. Waterbucks, the end.